gonna jump. You know what though? You are showing people that it's never too late though, because you know how sometimes people fall into the traps of I'm this old now. I don't really want to start to know, learn anything new. I don't want to do anything new. I'm just going to stick with what I know. You're 58 years old. You're doing RVs. You're doing everything. You're learning. You, you said Google's your teacher, right? You, like, you're challenging yourself. You're challenging yourself even at your age to be like, you can't tell me what I can know or can't do or, you know, you just put it upon yourself. You're always betting on yourself. Now I want to tell you what was a big part of that. This fucking hip hop game. Because you see MC Shan, you know what I would have to do to get showed? Do you know what, how much bowing down and ass kissing I would have to do for somebody to call me for a fucking show? And then you go off me bullshit money. Nigga, I spend that shit every day. Fuck out of here. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So, I saw you were saying it, that they were just trying to give you like a thousand dollars for to pick to do your whole discography, and you was like, "Hell no!" The fuck out of <laughs> I spend that shit, motherfucking on a. I know what I'd be mad as fuck when my sons is here. I'd be going through hundred and fifty dollars worth of groceries every fucking day. Like, what the fuck going on here? You know what I'm saying? You want to tell me about a thousand dollars? Get the fuck out of here! And this is what I say to people before you approach people understand who they are although they may look at me like i'm a broke old school rapper understand that i'm far from broke and you cannot approach me with the same method that you approach these other cats with with the it's a good look uh come on shan it'll help you out in your motherfucker i don't got a career bitch i don't move the fuck on i'm not walking around do you remember me mc shan it's not what i did that you should look out for it's what i'm a about to do that's my boss your motherfucking head mm. fuck what i did that's what i stay on it ain't about the age it's all about a person's drive for their own success if i had to beg these people to uh let me feed my kids i gotta kiss ass suck dick take a dick in a booty whatever the fuck i gotta do to fucking please them but instead i say fuck that i don't give a fuck about hip-hop you ain't got to pay me you ain't got to put me on no shows they got these motherfucking hip-hop motherfucking oh the, the jazzy jeff and all that charlie mack and my man but there's a reason why i ain't on that because the fresh prince money behind that oh shan ain't getting on that shit <laughs> <laughs> right we gonna get into that one later we gonna get into that one later but um, well, look, my we, thing is this i do these things so i can make my own money I, I built two party buses for people i don't build them all week and all that because that's not my thing i got my own stuff to build my own tv shows but i build buses for people that saw me build on instagram came to me and said i'm bringing you a bus and i've made Ill buses out of their joint. I made a cheese mm. bus look like a condominium party club. Wow. So we we kind of got sidetracked, but um, I asked you, would you have done things different and did a diss song after the bridge is over if you could go back? Yeah, I would have. I begged Molly. I yeah, begged because Molly you said that in the past song. that Marley told you not to respond, right? Molly, I see back then. See, now, if I, if I was now, I could open up my own computer, make my own beat, and do what I want. But back then, you needed a producer. Molly thought that they were getting too much shine on us. I'm like, Molly, these niggas is blowing up anyway. <laughs> so after Kill That Noise, I'm ready to go at this nigga head again. Molly, like, fuck that. I ain't messing with that. And so when you had to have a producer, unlike back in the days, oh, you put water in it mixed because you got a laptop. Wasn't like that back then. You had to go to your producer. And if the producer was Molly Maul, and Molly Maul said, fuck Chris and them, he hated Scott. He hated Scott. That was, <laughs> Molly could not stand fucking Scott LeBrock. <laughs> Why? Because them motherfuckers went in power play and stole Molly's tapes of all his samples. Molly used to leave his reels in power play. Chris and them, the night that Chris and them came and magic dissed them and told them, yes, this is garbage, yo. The, the song that the, the reason why Chris made that record 
when Magic told them motherfuckers, your sis whack, get the fuck out the studio. What they did was they went, they went in that little room and stole all of Molly's samples. Molly had his samples on a, a, a regular two-track reel. Took it. <laughs> Niggas <laughs> took it. Molly hated that motherfucker Scott the Rock. <laughs> <laughs> no Rest disrespect to Scott the Rock. Rock man. Man. I, I was just about to say that. Yeah. Because look, I'm talking about Scott like he my man, because he was. And it's no disrespect on them motherfuckers was my peep. We used to have to look out for each other while we was on tour. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's exactly what, what where the where the bullshit came in. So and I want to tell you this part because on Drink Champs, when they brought it up to K, uh, to Chris and asked him about, oh, what do you think about uh, him saying that Marley Mall told uh, Marley Mall told him not to do the song, and he said that's pussy shit. You're a grown man. You should have did it. Basically, I just explained it. I just explained it. What I just explained to you should tell you that what he was saying was just for bolstering. Because back then, if Scott didn't make his song, he wouldn't have done it. If Molly mm-hmm. didn't make my song, so all him talking about, what he's talking about is the future that didn't exist yet, where you can get on your computer and make a beat with Fruity Loops or whatever the hell you wanted to do. So what he was saying was well before that time. Him knowing, like I said, Chris is a master of manipulation. He's got y'all people to think for 30 fucking years that he took me out. Didn't fucking happen. We never fucking battled. So for you, my host, anything that nigga said on drink champs, fuck out of here. (laughs) (laughs) 